Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, the honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone for teaching us his truth through well. wealth. And Shalom to the Akim out there, the Akwath, pushing this word out in sincerity and in truth, all right, and laboring in, in Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Okay, so I just wanted to bring out this picture real quick. You know, this is uh, what's supposed to be your queen, okay? And this is the baby that came out of uh, Prince Harry, I believe his name is. All right, and they don't want the kid to be dark skin, okay? There was an article that came out, you know, a couple of days ago about how they were concerned, okay? How the, the royal, supposed royal family was concerned that the baby was gonna come out colored, okay? There were there was an actual concern about the child being colored, man. All right, and that's why they photoshopped this little tablet, okay, and not okay. You know. So let's start off at Luke one and thirty-two. It says, "He shall be great," talking about Yahweh Shai, and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. All right, and who is the Most High? The King of Kings. Okay, so Yahweh Shai is going to be called the Son of the Highest. All right. Now, why were they concerned about Prince Harry's uh, son? Because, you know, eventually down the line, they know that that son is eventually going to take the throne, you know, and he's going to be called a king. OK, and if that king looks like a dark skinned baby or that if that king is a dark skinned baby, then that king is going to grow up to be uh, or that prince is going to grow up to be a king, which is a dark skinned man, you know. And that's Esau Edom's way of thinking, man. They don't want no dark skin, uh, you know, person, man. You know? And if an elite, all right, if the elite ever put a dark skin man in power, okay, it's only to show or to calm something down. You know? They strategize, man. The, the book of Psalms goes into that. You know, Psalms 83 also says that. You know, so this is Luke 1 and 32 again. He shall be great. He shall be called the son of the highest. All right. And Yahweh Shai, as we know, all right. And that scripture fortifies what we believe in. Yahweh Shai was a dark skinned man. Okay. A so called Negro. You know? So for these Christians, these Edomite, Edomite Christians, to say that that's not a very Christian thing to say. All right. Well, we bring out, when we bring out the scriptures, then guess what? You wouldn't act like a Christian if you knew who, who the Messiah was, you know? You wouldn't give a damn about calling yourself a Christian if you knew Yahweh Shai was a dark-skinned man or is a dark-skinned man, you know? So it says, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, all right? Which David was a dark-skinned man too, you know? It says, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom there shall be no end. All right. So the one that you have to worry about is Yahweh Shai, man. Because when Yahweh Shai comes back, he's not coming back to, to rescue these Edomites. All right. He's not coming back to rescue, all right, uh, you Edomites or you other nations. You know, Yahweh Shai is coming back to rescue who? Verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. You see, so Jacob is going to be the established throne. Okay is going to be the, the glorified, in a glorified state, all right? And it's going to be uh, uh, for Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, you know? That's going to be Israel. And these other nations are going to be under Israel. They will not have a rulership because the rulership will belong to Israel, you know? And that proves it, man. You see? It says... Um, you know, and the way that I'm going about this this video, all right, is Luke 16, you know, because you have people mistaking Lazarus and the rich man, you know, saying that this is talking about, you know, the rich of the world and, you know, it's talking about this and that. That's not what that's talking about, man. All right. Lazarus and the rich man is, is showing you right here, man. OK, who, who are the people being discriminated against? OK, who are the people that are not OK? You know? So, I already brought out one scripture, all right? And that's talking about only for Israel. You see? Only for Israel. Now, who is Israel? They're the poor of the world. 
You know, the people that are not okay, man. The ones that are okay right now are you damn Edomites. Okay, the people that are not okay. All right, are are, are the Israelites, man? So-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You know, so this is Luke one and, and sixty-eight, and then I'll jump to uh, Luke sixteen. It says, "Blessed be Yahweh, the God of Israel, for He hath visited and redeemed His people." You see, so who is He redeeming? Israel. You know, it's all about Israel, man. We can go into millions of scriptures talking about, you know, only Israel is going to be saved. You know, we can do that all day. It says, "And hath raised up a horn of salvation for us." In the house of his servant David, which is what? It's not just talking about Judah. Okay? It's talking about the ones that are being built up in this faith and this truth, the ones that are increasing in faith and in truth, the ones that are laboring after Yahabashim Yahushai, the ones that are laboring for that rest, you know, which is the salvation that we want. You see? Those are the ones that are in the house of David. It says, and he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. Which have been, okay, that means the that, that means future, present, and past. Have been. Okay? Since the world began. You know? So since the beginning of time, which were a people and, and had no name, okay? As scripture says, which were a people before time and had no name, those are the sons of God. And now we have a name and we're called Israelites. Okay? Which that's another another topic in itself. You know, the one Ratzazah, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai allows me to do that. But it says, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. You know, so it says that we should be saved from our enemy enemies and from the land of all that hate us. Now, is this not hate? Is this not hate? OK, here you have a dark skinned woman. OK, and a woman of color. All right. And the baby's going to come out looking a little bit brown all right and this is really how they feel man this is okay all right you have pinkish you know a little pale and a little bit of of, of flesh tone and then you have melanin and that's not okay you know why because you look over here and you see nothing but pale skinned people man you know so they show you the hate they show show you their hate man you know, so it says that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Now, what did you have? What should I say? Let's see if I can get it. See, kingdom of the most high suffereth. It's down here. It's a lucky. Let me see if I can find it. I always forget the scripture of kingdom. Of God suffereth violence. Matthew eleven. Let me start off at eleven. Uh, Matthew eleven and eleven. Verily I say unto you. Among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist. All right. When you go into the story of John the Baptist, he was Elijah in the reincarnation. OK. And then he turned the heart of the fathers to the to the sons and the heart of the sons to the fathers. All right. And that didn't happen with John the Baptist. That happened with Abba Bivens. OK. Which was also Elijah. It says, notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he okay so even if these i right, say that this this woman is a jake or this woman is a jake all right and and in the kingdom of heaven even if they are in the least okay or even a, a regular jake you know a, a two-third jake even one of them being the least in the kingdom of heaven 
is still greater than John the Baptist. That the, that's the, 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 you know, what the Most High is going to set Israel as. That's the standard that he's going to set us as, you know. It says, until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth much violence. All right, suffereth violence. And the violent take it by force. Okay, now who are the violent? What does that look like? You know, who are the violent, man? Who are the violent of the earth? You know, Luke 1 and 69, and he hath risen up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Okay, so if, if you go back to Genesis all the way up to Revelations, all right, and from one point to another, it talks about nothing but Israel. And then from that point to another, it seems like it talks about Israel, but it also talks about Gentiles. Then guess what? It's talking about Israel altogether. Gentiles that were dispersed, all right? Israelites that were dispersed amongst the Gentiles, you know, that weren't considered to be Israelites because they couldn't prove they were Israelites. Back, back then, you had to have documentation to prove you were an Israelite. That's why in the book of Timothy, it says... Um, not to give in to endless genealogies. Why? Because if you believe in this truth, then that's the DNA test that you need. You believing in this truth makes you an Israelite, you know, or it doesn't make you an Israelite, proves you're an Israelite because only Israelites are going to believe in this. And that's why the Apostle John said, only the ones that believe in Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, okay, only the ones that believe and have this faith in Yahweh Shai and Yahweh the Most High can be called children of the most high you know so it says luke 1 and, and, and 70 and he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began and that's also in uh first um ezra's chapter 1 verse 51 or verse 50 to 51 all right talks about the prophets and that's how the most high speaks through his prophets you know so it says that we should be saved from our enemies enemies and from our hand and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant the oath which he swore unto our father abraham you see so let me get this one just to prove that that was talking about you know talking about israel so now we'll go to luke 16 you know which i've gone into it before but, you know, when a little bit of more information comes out, it's good to go over. So this is Luke 16 and verse, was it 17? Verse 19, Luke 16 and 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid, laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. All right. And, and, you know, that's a representation of the rich man being the Edomites. All right. And two thirds that go after the Edomites and Lazarus being Israel. All right. And in particular, the one third, you know, and Abraham, of course, represents Yahabashim Yahushai coming back to save us, you know. So it says, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip his tip, the tip, dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am in torment and in this flame. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good tidings or thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted and thou art tormented. Okay. So that which is coming, all right, is going to be flipped, okay? That which is not okay right now is going to be okay. It's going to be more than okay, man. All right, you Edomites are living okay, 
All right, the least in the kingdom of heaven is going to be living way far beyond the riches here in the in the earth now. You know, that's the power that we serve, man. The one that sets up kingdoms. All right, the one that brings down kingdoms. The one that sets up his people in power forever and ever. That's the power that we serve. You know? So it says um Verse 26, Luke 16 and 26. And beside all this, between us, you and there is a great gulf fixed so that they which which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. All right. Which really in the kingdom of heaven, all Israelites, two thirds and one third are going to be living great. You know, and that's why I brought out that that part in Luke one. So back in Luke one, 53, he had filled the hungry with good things. And the rich he hath sent empty away. Who are the hungry? The ones looking for those crumbs. Okay, the Israelites. We're hungry now. You know, we're not living great. We're not okay. All right. And the rich he hath sent empty away, which are you Edomites. You know, and you lower Edomites, you know, got the shit end of the, of the stick, man. You know, because the Most High made it to where even in your kingdom, you're not rejoicing. Even in your kingdom, you're not at the top all the time. You know, only your higher up elites are at the top. The rest of you Edomites are just, you know, bottom feeders, man. And in the kingdom of heaven, it's going to be the same thing. You know, you Edomites are going into slavery, man. And the rest of you are going to get killed off. So it says, Luke 1 and 54, he hath hope in his servant Israel and remembrance of his mercy. You see, so Luke 16, when it's talking about the rich and the poor and the poor being saved and the rich not being saved, it's talking about Esau, Edom versus Israel. OK, that's the difference between an Israelite An Israelite is going to be saved from the most high regardless. All right. That's like uh, it says. Uh, what is it? The book of Romans. Romans 11. OK, which let me get that real quick and I'll come back to this. Romans 11 and let me see here. Um, Romans 11 and 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, which is Yahweh Shai, and shall turn away in the ungodliness from Jacob, which is the one third first. For this is my covenant unto them. Then when I shall uh, when I shall take away their sins, OK, as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. OK, those are the two thirds. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the father's sakes. OK, so the two thirds were made to go up against the one third. OK, in order to save the one third. And then in the kingdom of heaven, those two thirds are still going to come back and rejoice in Yahweh Shai and have part of that promise. Why? Because they're beloved of the Father's sake. You know? So it, it's a perfect balance with the Most High. You're, you know, we're going through a punishment now. You know, coming back to the law, statutes, and commandments, coming back to Yahweh Shai, coming back to our heritage, you know, preaching the gospel, teaching the gospel, you know, coming back to this, we're going through certain things, you know, brothers are going through more than others, you know. Um, but it's better that we suffer now. And eventually we're going to suffer persecution as well. You know, but like Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai said, it's better that you suffer for righteousness sake than for evil doing. You know, and that's in uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 17. You know, and the two thirds are going to suffer by way of, of famine and taking the, the mark of the beast, which is the um, RFID. All right. And, you know, going through tribulation, they're going to be persecuted too for looking like a so-called Negro, Latino, Native American, or, or Filipino, or for being brown, you know, they're going to be persecuted too, man. All right. That's why it's important to stay to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai and stay faithful to Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, you know. But they are they are loved from Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, you know. So going back to Luke 16 and verse... 23 and it came to pass uh, Salakia verse 24 
And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. You know, and in the kingdom of heaven, they're going to be very, very tormented, man. Do double unto her as she did unto you, you know. Also, the gulf that is fixed, you know, in the kingdom of heaven, an Edomite is not going to be living like they are now, okay? An Edomite is not going to be living like Jake is going to be living at that time, you know? And they're going to be in hardcore slavery, and they're going to want a little break. They're going to want to, to, to enjoy, you know, the beautiful weather outside while they see the Israelite you know, children running around and playing. They're going to want their children to, you know, or not their children, but they're going to want themselves to enjoy and rejoice in those times. You know? And they might have children, you know, in the kingdom of heaven because they have to be in slavery for a thousand years. You know, so they probably will have children for that thousand years just to go into, you know, to be slaves. You know, and after a thousand year period, they're going to be completely cut off. You know, from the face of the earth. So it says, but Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receives thy good things and likewise Lazarus, evil things. And that's what we received, you know. So what are we looking forward to now? Deuteronomy 33 and 26 through 29. We're looking for that salvation, that eternal life in rejoicing and, and praising. All right. Over Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, so it says. And besides all this, all right, so besides all those things that we went through, besides, you know, you know, them living pretty good and OK, you know, it says besides all this between us, the Israelites and you, the Edomites, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. All right. Even uh, that's in uh, uh, Ezekiel chapter 20 and 32. You have the Israelites that said, we will be as the heathen, you know, and the Most High said, those things that, that you, you think in your heart that you will be as a th the heathen will not come to pass. Why? Because the Most High is going to force you two thirds. All right. Whether you like it or not, the Most High is going to force you two thirds to be complacent and, and to be, uh, um, um, you know, be under the law, statutes and commandments of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. Okay. You can't tell the Most High and said, nah, I'm not going to be like you, you say I am. You know? It says, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So no Edomite can make it into Israel. And no Israel can make it like an Edomite. All right? Some of you may die like an Edomite, but at the end, you're all going to, you know, realize who was right. Which was Great, great Millstone. You know, GMS. So back in Luke 1 and verse 54... And he hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. As he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. That's the same thing you see in uh, Galatians chapter 3 and 16. He did not say to seeds as of many, but seed as of one. Which is who? Isaac. Jacob. Okay. Uh, singular. Not as of many. Otherwise, the, the Moabites would have made it. You know, because they were related to Abraham, related to Lot. You know, the Ishmaelites would have made it. The Edomites would have made it. You know, because they all came from from uh, Abraham and from Abraham's father. You know, so it's only been given to the Israelites, man. So back at the top, Luke 1 and 53, he hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. All right, and the rich man of this world is going to be turned away, man. You know, so if you think you're you're smart, all right, if you think you're smart and you're not following after Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and you're an Israelite, so-called Negro, Latino, Native American, and the word resonates within you, then think again, man. Okay, because if you're not following after Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, Really, what you're doing is setting yourself up for that destruction that's coming, you know. So I hope that was edifying with that. I want to give all honor, glory, and praise unto Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakwadash, the bonders of the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom.